brothers and sisters, God bless you. Thank you for joining. So we're going to start uh, this session today. It is a discussion. So we really want everybody to participate. We have been speaking on the topic through riches as a means of wealth and impact, because that's God's desire for the children of God. True riches at the end of the day means wealth and impact that God gives to you, gives to me. Praise the name of the Lord. So other people, people may make wealth. They may make a lot of impact, which is very good, commendable. But there are still some who do that, and they are still disappointed at the end of the day that fulfillment may not be there. And what may be missing, it is the God factor that may be missing. And that's why we're talking about true riches. So true riches is being able to fulfill that godly dream, godly purpose. So wealth is your portion, my brothers and sisters. Impact is your portion. And when you do it in God, you're really talking about the true riches. Praise the name of the Lord. So let's recap this session by reading our text again, Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. But I want us to start today with verse 8, part B. Verse 8, part B. It's a statement that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ made, which is what I'm really emphasizing and the reason why we are teaching this topic. Look at Luke chapter 16, verse 8B. It was Jesus speaking here. He said, for the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. For the sons of this world, the children of this world are more shrewd in their generations, in their own ways and in their things than the children of light. So this is the emphasis I'm making. Wealth and impact belongs to you as children of light. And also you, who has wealth and impact, you need God now so you can make the right impact, make it in the way that at the end of life, you will not regret it. Because if you don't have eternal life, which you can only get through Jesus Christ, the one who is the son of God, the one who boldly declare, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to God, the Father, except by me. If you don't have Jesus Sorry to announce to you, at the end of it, you will see him, Jesus. But it will be with a disappointment. And we will talk about that matter another day. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, the second part of our reading, Luke chapter 16, verses 11 and 12. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, unrighteous wealth, who will commit to your trust the true riches? That's the one we're talking about. Well, and if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? So there is the wealth and impact that is your own. And it is, there is a process. That's the process we've been looking at. When you follow that process, you will get the result. And more importantly, following it according to the way of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So the Holy Spirit helps us and guides us in this right process. So a typical example, an epitome of a fulfilled life in the Bible is Joseph. And his life gives us end to end, as one would say that we can study in depth and emulate to achieve this impact and wealth that we are talking about. The parallel with Joseph, even though he existed before uh, Jesus came to make us Christians, as we know who a Christian is, one that has received the Holy Spirit and has therefore been transformed by that Spirit of God. That's the unique identity of a Christian. Praise the name of the Lord. The part, however, there is a clear parallel in that Joseph received the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit we are having today. Praise the name of the Lord through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
so we can achieve the same success Joseph achieved and even much more, much more. We can achieve much more than Joseph. So with that, I'm going to just do a quick summary of the qualities of Joseph. I know I had promised us that we will do a, a mini cash flow model today. I haven't forgotten, I try to keep to that. Um, so quick summary, I share my screen. So to summarize this excellent life of Joseph, I've captured it as Joseph outstanding leadership, outstanding leadership, you can add qualities. Joseph's outstanding leadership. Number one, visionary and performance-driven leader. That's whom he was. Visionary and performance-driven leader. He had a clear vision cap captured in three uh, statements. Number one, to save lives. Number two, to save and protect the posterity of Israel. Number three, to be the ruler of the people, the people of God, the people God puts under him, and he ruled excellently. Number two, quality, excellence, and quality service. Excellence and quality service. Number three, competence and skills. Competence, no shabbiness. I keep emphasizing this. Give, spend time and think about these things for your own life. Even people who have taken just one element of this have shown in life. If you've seen a person who has made a first class in the university, they will tell you they paid attention to excellence and competence. They just paid attention, make sure they solve all their problems. They read every topic that the, the lecturer has given. They don't give excuses. They do that before they go to bed. They recap it and reproduce it. Practice and practice till they perfect it. That's why um, you know you've heard the popular saying, "We are what we repeatedly do." Excellence, therefore, is not an act, but a habit. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, therefore, is not an act, but a habit. So, what you continually do. Number four, people management and communication. Oh, Joseph was very good with managing people and communication. Remember when um, he was speaking to Pharaoh and Pharaoh was telling him the dream. The first thing that he said was, God will give you the answer of peace. And that created the connection already. Pharaoh was willing to listen to him, to hear more. Oh, this is God. Hallelujah. Number five, positive disposition. A diehard optimist. Uh, those of you who drop into depression, truly speaking, uh, when I see people who fall into depression, I really sympathize with them. But I'm, I always wonder, how do you allow yourself to be so consumed in something that you have no power over to drop into depression? I know the second side of depression is demonic. I would not mean word about it. So that's why I also sympathize with people who fall into depression because that demon has afflicted their minds, their thoughts, created panic and fear. For, a, for, 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 for you to understand, know that even a man, a strong man like Elijah, fell into depression at a point in time. Remember when Elijah cried and said, God, take my life. When people say, take my life, it, there are people who are falling into that state. So uh, nothing to be ashamed of, but know that you can develop a positive disposition and you will always learn how to come out of that bad situation, that depressive situation. Look at Joseph. He went through the three Ps that were horrible, three horrible Ps. The first P was the pit. They threw him into the pit. They were, and they were going to kill him, his brothers. Not anybody, if it's a stranger, you know, it just happened. His own brothers 
openly told him, held him, threw him into the pit and said, we will see how that your dream will be fulfilled when we kill you today. But God showed up for him. From the pit, he went to Potiphar's house. Just thinking he was going to have a fresh breath of rest. Potiphar's wife started her own. She stopped him and disturbed him. He didn't have peace in the house, despite his outstanding performance. From Potiphar's house, he was thrown into prison. Prison. But God showed up. Hallelujah. Your God will show up. Your time will come. Maintain positive disposition. Be a diehard optimist that your God will come through. I always announce to anybody in anywhere I go to, especially when there are challenges, that I serve the God of 11th hour. That even if it will be 11.9999999 minutes, I tell you, my God will show up before that 12 o'clock will strike in the mighty name of Jesus. And God has not failed. He will not fail you in Jesus' name. Number six, rugged and resilient. Nothing deterred him from his dream. Let me just make one point that I wanted to make there. So the other side, if you have tried to be positive, to come out of depression, to come out of bad situation, and you're still finding it difficult, know that there is a demonic side to you. Ask somebody to pray with you. Come to Shaw Fire Life Conference platform, and we will pray with you. We'll cast out that demon and you will be free in the name of Jesus. Call any child of God a Christian that is filled with the Holy Spirit to just pray with you. Jesus said, in my name, a Christian will cast out the devil. Okay, uh, because of time I run, rugged and resilient, nothing deterred him from his dream. Keep your dream, keep your focus, forgiving, past ills, no dwelling in the past. Don't dwell in the past failure, past ills. Anything that has not killed you, brothers and sisters, has nothing to do with your life again once you've passed that place. Anything that has not killed you has nothing to do with your life again, does not have power over your life. Move on and keep pursuing your dream. Self-discipline, integrity, and sacrifice. Number nine, economic expert. Oh, Joseph propounded the 20% saving wealth creation scheme. 20% saving. Wealth creation scheme, you must learn to practice that. Every year, make your account. Have you saved 20% of all your income in that year, all your, 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 your earning that in that year? Check it. Number 10, the most important, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. This is why you must come to Jesus Christ, because there is no other way to receive the Holy Spirit and the wisdom of God if you don't come to Jesus. And to have the understanding of the word of God, praise the name of the Lord. So I want to dwell a bit into the economics of uh, uh, Joseph. For this time, I told us about simple cash flow. So this is life, simple cash flow that I helped a small business to develop. They came to me, they wanted to do a uh, business. And I told them to I, I coach them. I said, at least you must do a one-year forecast. So cash flow is simple, a, a, a forecast over a period of time of the amount that, you, uh, that your investment will absorb or generate. Note those two words, absorb or generate. So what is absorbed is expenditure, and what it generates is the revenue. So the difference between these two simply gives you your profit. So this is very simple. Um, so within one year, uh, so discounting will not uh, be applicable here. But of course, if you took a loan, you have to factor that in. So I'm going to bring very simple things. So what I ask, I coach uh, people, starters, it just take one year. But some projects will be longer than one year, right? It could be two years. So you could repeat this over that period. The key thing is you will repeat it till you will meet a point we call break even point, right? I'm going to come back to that uh, before, before I jump. So this is uh, this person was going to start this business in September 20, 
And so I say, take one year and just do monthly forecast of all your expenditure and all your income. Yeah, A expenditures and incomes. So there are two parts of expenditures. You have CapEx and you have OPEX. CapEx is the main big money you invest. There are other definitions. I want to just keep it very simple. And OPEX, just call it your running costs. For purpose of this, I advise you to go read it up again so you can see the more detail. I don't want to say things that are confusing, things I know people at different levels. Uh, uh, connecting. The experts can go read it up and they already know. But just keep it simple. CapEx, the, the money you will invest upfront to bring uh, the product, the service you're going to produce, whatever you want to produce. And then OPEX is what you will use to run, to sustain it going forward, right? So you can see this model. So this person was going to spend, just use any unit, this amount of money. So those, the CAPEX, September, October, and then the running cost salary was part of it, advertisement, and then fueling and traveling. Those were the OPEX to sustain and uh, the salary for the salesperson. Uh, so the uh, main investment here, initial deposit of investment for the production, delivery truck, uh, and then final deposit for the production. So you sum this up. Now, let's come to total expenditure line. You see here, this is the cumulative. So here you see the 15, the 25, and then you sum up all this came to that total. Yeah, 48.6. Then the revenue, um, the start month have, the second month was December peak period. So they were going to get double in December in the assumption model, but this already had risked reasonably. So that was okay. And then they will stabilize and continue to make 17 uh, million every month. Okay. Now, the sum of this cumulative total expenditure, 48.6 revenue over that one year period, 12 months will be 204. If you take the difference, they will make 155 million. Wow, what a fantastic business. So this was what they brought back to me after I coached them and say, use this simple model. So you are to run, one point is, you are to run this model till you can see where, look at this cumulative costs and cumulative revenue. Where your cumulative revenue exceeds your cumulative costs is your break even point. Yeah, it, it, it occurs around there. So from there, you can say, oh, this business will make money. Uh, the question is, how much money? So, like this person here said, whoa, he was going to make this money. But when I look at it, I realize that this was a cyclic production. Every three months, they have assumed that they will sell this quantity that were, was going on here without putting back the cost of reorder. So once I help them put the product, production reorder cost here, look at this which happens every three months. They will reorder this quantity. So over that uh, uh, 12 months, they will reorder four times. That's the first investment that they ordered. They will exhaust that quantity in three months, and then they will reorder again and will exhaust in three months. Once I put that, look at what the profit dropped to, 38 million. So, and this person was, Preparing to go and take a loan with this kind of profit in mind. Imagine what the person would have promised the person that would have given the loan. Would have promised based on this kind of money, saying, wow, I will make so much money. Whereas this is the only money they will make in a year. Now, another key point is this to note. 
if the person or the loan, the financier takes this money, look at it. It means that even to reinvest, if the owner, the person who financed this money took out everything that they put in, it means that this person cannot continue this business because the entire profit is less than the amount you need to reorder, right? Talk less of the running costs. So these are the kind of things you do. It means this person should kind of like lock in this kind of business for like two years. This is where the power of sacrifice comes in. To be able to have enough profits that you say, okay, if say people who sponsored pull out, I could have enough money to reinvest and run my business. That is just simple cash flow. So cash flow helps you to determine profitability and also profitability indicators. I have mentioned a few there, there are many of them. I have mentioned the break even point. I have mentioned the economic cutoff. Yeah, the, so there is a net present value that you can also determine, but I, I just stay with the simple ones. So economic cutoff, break even point. Break even point is very important as I showed us because there you can really tell that, okay, this business makes profit. There are some businesses you run like that and you will never see this point. You will never see this crossing. We are, let me use this one because this one I've built in the cycle and I'll still make a point from that. So where the cumulative revenue, you know, here 51 exceeds the cumulative cost. Now, now see what happens here, which is the point. You will see in this cyclic case, you could see negative skips happening here, happening here. But from this month, May, after this negative, there is cumulative profit all the way to the end because the amount of money recycled now uh, takes care of that um, reinvestment uh, in the reordering that has been put in. So these are the kind of analysis you make simply. You list your items, all your items here that will absorb money, call investment and uh, uh, the, the investment money and the running costs, CAPEX and OPEX, and then the revenue, make your assumptions, but use real market assumptions. I want to end here so we can have the discussion. The true riches wisdom nuggets. For a person with a vision, every trial is an opportunity for triumph, you know that. He knows what his destination feels like, what it smells like, and who should be around there. There may be other comfortable places while on the journey, but somehow he knows these are not the real comforts of his destination. So he pushes on and presses for that, for the pride, for the mark of his high calling, for that final destination of his dream. So enjoy your dream to your destination, but let nothing stop you on the way till you get there. God bless you. I will stop sharing my screen and we'll take the discussion. So you can open the lines now and let's have your contribution. Let's have your questions. It could be on the simple flow, cash flow model we have just shared um, or on all the other subjects, all the other things we have discussed in this topic. Before that, let me um, call the accountant to just chip in one or two things. Uh, uh, Sister Gloria, my wife, please just help us add the professional touch to this. By the way, I hope you all know I am not, I didn't study economics in school, but I would not say because I have done some economics as part of my work. So uh, I, I studied engineering, this is exactly what we're talking about, develop skills that will help you. So I had the opportunity to do project economics and I took it very seriously and learned it and worked uh, as an economist uh, on projects. Okay, please over to you, Sister Gloria, open the line and make few points as a professional accountant to us on this subject. 
Good morning, everybody. Praise the Lord. Uh, yeah, you've, you've said the basic things there. So for a cash flow model, to make it very simple, it's basically our inflow or outflow of cash. In fact, inflows and outflows of cash that we have. For us to really understand it from the most basic point, if you look at your account, your bank account, the way you operate it, you open an account with a bank, you deposit some amount of money, that is an inflow. And you start making withdrawals, payments, and all of that. Those are outflows. And you maybe put some more money there, inflows. So that's just a simple thing. And your balance at any point in time, that is a net cash flow. So if I want to make it a bit more professional, it will be breaking that cash flow statement into operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. But those are more for businesses. So if we want to bring it down to our individual levels, which is what I think Pastor is trying to make us know, we have to, at every point in time, make sure that our inflows are more than our outflows so that you can gain some stability. I mean, no, no investor, investor will want to come and invest in a business or in an individual that is having negatives. And also creditors, people we are owing, they will have more confidence if they see that we are maintaining a positive cash flow. So those are just some of the basic uses. But I would just want to make one more point from here so that we'll save time. Cash flow basically helps us to see our liquidity position. That's how liquid are we at any point in time compared to the profit or loss statements and balance sheets, which determines our profitability. And in conclusion, I want to say that profitability is different from liquidity. Cash is king, as we all know. So a business or an individual might be profitable. You might have assets and all of that that look good. But if you, don't, if you can't turn them to cash at any point in time when you need to meet up obligations, then there's a problem. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, and I'm very mindful of that point she has just made for big businesses and all that. What I have seen play the small businesses is that thinking that they can have profitability without cash. They don't have the capacity to sustain themselves. They run basically a cash business in the small businesses that's why i always say stay with this at least eh? and use this to do your assessment so thank you uh, professional accountant for that uh, point indeed this has indeed been the real 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 point to use to guide the small businesses uh, who don't have that uh, robust uh, base to um, have paper, paper, paper profitability and don't have the cash to meet the uh, daily runnings because that's where they go. They go out of business, which is uh, really the point you've made. Thank you. Okay, now let's hear others. Questions. So you can always build this simple spreadsheet for yourself and do the analysis, you can get it to a very complex level. Discounting, like I mentioned, I haven't put that at all. There are other elements, you're paying tax, you're, like I said, your loan, you, you indicate that. Some of you could do it even far more detailed. So take this just as a, a starting point, especially for those who are really, really basic. And is the discipline to start doing something like this, uh, this is live example that I showed, I showed us here. Okay, so Joseph had economic skill and he used that to advise uh, uh, the people of Egypt and they survived the um, famine and through that, even his own people, Israel, uh, survived the famine and the famine affected a whole range of uh, nations then and because of that ingenuity, that wisdom God gave him and that economic skill, he was able to advise and uh, save the world at that time. Okay, please, your contribution.
Feel free, open the line and share. Thank you, Pastor and Sister Gloria. My question is on the, the 20% savings. Okay. That you advise us to do. Now, some of us are, we get gift income. When I mean gift income is that we are missionaries and God uses people to give us gifts. Okay. So uh, when this money comes, how do I, <laughs> I will need your advice on how to save 20% from that because it looks quite much. It's even much more than the, the basic type one pays. So, yes. I, so I don't know if you have anything to chip in, you know, yes. concerning that. Yeah. Yes, in, indeed, indeed. I, I have something to, to share. Thanks for that uh, point, indeed. These are the, uh, the, the, the thing that there are so many variations of our own uh, lives and ventures and therefore how we apply the principle. Um, indeed, you do have um, your own expenditure. So this same model, and when I talk about the 20%, of course, it has to be on the, um, on, 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 say the profit, yeah? Let's look at it that way, uh, particularly in your own situation. What I would advise you in your situation is that there is your expenditure. You have to make your budget. Make your annual budget. Break it down to quarters and monthly, just like you have seen now. All right. Now, in the year, what is your annual expenditure? What is your annual expenditure that you need to meet? And what is your annual income, even though they come as gifts? right? When you do that, you see what is on top. And of course, what is on top, it's what should be saved, right? Because that's the difference. You also have to look at it this way. What I'm, I want to be very specific now, and I want to be a bit more aggressive because if you keep doing this simple one, I tell you that's going to be, um, how do I put it now? Uh, it's relaxing. So you really need to determine upfront. So if you've met your annual budget, I want to work from there. Your annual budget really is what you have to meet. It means you're going to have to make, have something that is more than that, your annual budget to be net positive, right? So your annual budget already sets, say, the level of your expectation for the year. I would recommend that upfront you gear to save that 20% of that your annual budget, to have that 20% uh, of that your annual budget as your savings that year as a target. So I want to turn it around to be a bit more aggressive and drive it from a target point of view. So from that budget, you put on top of that, that 20% of this will be what you save. So it means that your annual budget total, which is what you're going to drive at, should be your budget plus 20% of that budget as your total realization for the year. So if you do that, that your net surplus will be 20% of the budget. And you don't have to wait till the end of the year to save that. With that 20% you have already determined as you go on in the year, just be saving towards that amount. Break that 20% into what you'll be saving every month. Any month you haven't met that target, it means you are in a deficit till you meet it. This is going to drive what you're going to do to realize that money. So that's my uh, guidance on that. I hope it is clear. And is this second model? Yes, thank that you I very much. You should do? Yeah. I don't know. So Sister Gloria, does she have anything to add? 
or is it okay for her? What you have just said. Yeah, let's hear. Let's hear what she has to add. Please go ahead. Okay. Yes, I think um, what he has said is, is sufficient. So the the, okay. the cash flow budget has to be made up front, which works along with the cash okay. flow, so that you can work towards achieving that target. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Yeah. And I think this can extend to everyone else. The annual budget is very important. Mm -hmm. Yes, Sister Comfort, please go ahead. <laughs> yeah, Pastor. Oh yeah, Doctor, good sitting to have you, doing... sir. Please go yeah, ahead. Yeah, I, I was just sitting by doing some work and uh, I got interested in the presentation, you know. <laughs> so I said, uh, can I chip in a question for clarity? Yes, please. You yes, see, please. like over here, our economy depends on uh, people's lifestyle being funded by credit from financial institutions. Eh? Right. And, um, and uh, you've talked about people saving about 20%. I mean, this 20% will depend on if somebody earns 10,000 a month, uh, 10,000 rands. 20% is quite a huge amount of money. That's and right. you have other things to look after. You have fuel, you have these, you have that, you have housekeeping things. But of key thing is to acquire assets. If you, if you have to buy a house, most financial institutions look at your gross income. Although in, in the application, they'll ask you for the expenditure, but they look at your gross income. Assuming you earn say 120,000 rands a month, and you want a house of about uh, 30,000, which you will pay 30,000 mortgage, I mean, uh, say 20,000 mortgage. They think that one third of that your income should be able to fund that. So, but you have 20% to save. So where the, and other household things, how, how does one structure or play around those figures? Huh? Yeah. Good. So I want to start by, um, um, rolling up the loans that you pay for house mm -hmm. um, or the mortgage that you pay for house, everything into your annual budget, mm -hmm. first and foremost, yeah? Um, so once you've taken care of your expenditure, in detail, just like I put there, put those items, list them, including your uh, your mortgage, your your mortgage, all that. Then you would see clearly it will throw up what your annual expenditure, uh, your budget is, what your annual expenditure is. Of course, you should have life, right? So all the holiday, whatever it is that you want to do, put all that now. Having put all that, if just think of it as a project, if you were doing a business and you want to be profitable, right? Mm -hmm. You would see, okay, I earn 120,000 and now I've checked my gross in a, I mean, 120, let's just use, uh, yeah, even if you say gross, you have to also account for your tax and all that and all that. Mm -hmm. Let's account for everything and see now. If I've done all that and I see the total, is my total first starting point is, am I living above what I earn? Would what I earn pay for all the things that I'm listing? So that's the first thing that this will do for all of us. If it is above, then it means I have to optimize. That's the first point. Things just need to be cut off. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, things need to be cut off. This is where that power of sacrifice always comes in. There are some things that will need to be shaved off. Having done that, what can we accommodate inside there? Then comes the same model that we had talked about earlier around being driven by target upfront. 
rather than just live by, okay, when the end comes, we do the reconciliation and then we say, oh yeah, maybe I'm not profitable and, and I'm struggling. It's part of why people may end well and yet they are struggling because I haven't really taken time to really see what are the expenditure items. Okay, so back to um, the specific uh, um, um, uh, set. So uh, around the gross, which your pay slip, all that, all that. So you should keep that. All that we have talked about you using net here is for your own self. So I'm sure it's not the net you will um, um, and display. So the net is for your own self to be able to um, reduce to what extent you, you, um, you load your income with expenditure. It is just a lifestyle that one has to learn to practice at least to accumulate uh, money for some time. Of course, the money you accumulate becomes compounded and then saves you even those uh, constraints that one had before about being able to take mortgage and all that. Because if you have other properties as well, I believe you can also use all that into um, taking uh, either loan or uh, put down as collaterals to take uh, something, I don't know. Uh, if this touches at all on what you're looking at, otherwise you can clarify or I allow the accountant to also chip in. So summary for me is that it's still around doing that detailed budget and including everything in your case, in this case, it will require more of optimizing at some point, cutting down so things you can accommodate the more priority thing. Remember what we used to say about economics. Actually, sometimes when I do basic economic uh, training, I start by asking everybody to define economics. And I always remind people that every one of us would have at one time made this statement, ah, I've got to economize. You look at your situation and say, ah, I've got to economize. And at that moment, what were we really talking about? Simply coming back to prioritization and then honoring your scale of preference. That's what economics teaches. And that's basically what I'm saying here. So you've got to make that budget and then come back to scale of preference, uh, prioritize and use your scale of preference uh, to determine what stays at least in that year and what moves to some other time. Okay. I pause here, please go ahead. No, thank you very much for that. Uh, it's clear. I, I don't you. know whether the accountant in the house there can chip in something else. <laughs> yes, accountant, we task you to chip in something. <laughs> okay, yeah. What I can add there, the, 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 the budget that we make, it must not be that even if we made a budget for a year, it, or for a period, we must not wait until that's the end of that period to be able to, you know, take stock and look at what, how are we faring. That's why we have the interim and all of that make the period review to see how are we doing. And then that leads me to the point of variance, variance analysis. We look at how we fared and see if we overshot as um, Pastor was explaining there's a way we can even out you know, some other places. Some variances can be positive. We actually spent less than what we were expecting to spend. Or some can be negative. We spent more than what we're expecting. But at the end of the day, when we do that analysis, it evens out and reduces the excesses and you know helps us to get it better. So we now strategize for the next period. Thank you. That, yeah, thank you for that point. And indeed, I think it addresses a question that was raised on uh, the chat for irregular uh, income earner. Indeed, that's exactly what how it happens. I I irregular income earner. There are times you will earn more and you should save more. So that's why you should integrate this 20% at say over a year. You know, that's why we said, I said, it's good to take like a year's budget, all right? And say, okay, 20% on top of that, it's I fulfill my budget, the 20% is the surplus. So the period you get more, and you saw in that model where 
in December, which is hype season. The person was expecting to meet twice in December. So it means in that month, even if you were doing 20% uh, average, at least as a minimum, it should be, uh, the 20% of that month will be like 40% of other months, right? Uh, but of course, uh, in that month as well, you can either absorb more things that you couldn't have done in other times, or you will save a bit more than the, the 20%. So that answer um, by the accountant in the house, I think really helps to also clarify the irregular income earner. So use a period average and save more when you have more and uh, reschedule things around uh, to be able to accommodate such that at the end of the period, you, you still come out uh, um, around your expected target. The real push of the principle is that walk it up front. Try and do something. A whole lot of us make the assumption. We do it in our head and you never get it. And some don't even do any check at all. We just leave. When you start being deliberate and even start doing this small spreadsheet, you could imagine the learning that this small business took from this simple uh, fact that uh, they were thinking they're going to have 155, but just realizing how to put the recycling, the reordering costs brought everything down to, I mean, something under 40. Imagine 155 versus 40. So those kind of lesson. As you continue to practice, you see more. Okay, more questions, more discussion. What have we taken so far? The Joseph leadership model. Hello, what is striking to you? Yes, brother, please go ahead. Okay, for someone that I've been doing 20% and um, let's say you do all that 20% and you still doesn't come up as enough. I mean, what does the person get to do? Oh, you excellent. Know, because... Yeah, yeah, excellent question. I mean, like when doctor was asking, you know, he talked about 10K. Yeah, so remember the whole drive is for us to grow. So you can't stay in that small space. You won't have wealth and impact. This is a means to start growing. Like we were just saying, so there are times you have little, it cannot even meet what you want to do, right? This should trigger that real question. What is that vision? What is that dream? What is that skill, competence that you need to use to make more? It is about making more. It is about getting more. So that person isn't getting enough, you need more. So go into that competence, skills, service space. What is that thing you can do to get more? That's what this is about. As you get more, put down 20% to get more. And the 20% should not just be sitting there year in, year out. As you go, when it accumulates to a certain amount, put it in other investments that can generate more. We'll come to those in, uh, in a formal seminar. So that's my response to that. I hope that cuts it for you. Um, yes, yes, that, that was my, that's a, a bit of my thinking, but I think your response just uh, cemented it for me. So thank you, sir. Great. Yes, Sonny, please go ahead. I want to thank you for the explanation because uh, in one of the courses that I'm doing uh, right now in school, we have to do with the resource uh, scheduling. I think we, we humans, we actually focus on other things that we do. We pay attention to so many things. But when it comes to our finances, a lot of people, a whole lot of people, including myself, 
Sometimes we don't, we do, uh, we do not really pay attention to how we spend our money. Once the money comes in, because if we don't have a plan, we don't have a plan. We don't have a way of spending that money. With this one will be done today. This will be done by tomorrow. These are the money is going to be spent maybe by tomorrow when it comes in. That is going to give us problem. So I really thank God for this teaching this morning that actually opened my eyes to uh, to be more uh, uh, careful with the way I handle my finances. So I, really, I want to really thank you and your wife for this uh, eye-opening uh, teaching. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. So Sister Comfort sent a text, I can see. Thank you, Sonny. Um, Mr. Comfort sent a text and she said, can we also say, uh, let me see that. Yeah. Could we also say that we need to develop sustained saving culture, no matter how small, since the inability to meet the 20% may sometimes feel unachievable for many and may be frustrating. Over long term, the amount saved may add up to much. Yes, excellent. That's indeed uh, what um, the variance that we were talking about really means, that sometimes you have much, you can save more, even much more than 20%. And sometimes you may be low and you struggle to save 20% because all your expenditure when you do the net, it, you don't have up to 20% to save. So indeed, thank you for putting it succinctly. Uh, this, this, the, the, this is right, this is correct. Yeah, good. Any other comment? Good, so we've uh, learned learned a lot about Joseph and from Joseph. I want to ask us to take time and study more on our own about this man of God, this uh, type, a type of spirit-filled person that uh, has given us the model that we can really use to develop ourselves and drive our own life, our performance, and our faith in God and achieve wealth and impact as he did while continuing to focus on eternal life that God has given to us. The Almighty God bless every one of us who has connected and uh, the Spirit of God give us the wisdom to practice that which we have learned and even make it more, uh, make it far better than what you have heard. Yeah, you will use it to teach other people. Other people will be more developed than even what we have shared here in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you everyone for connecting Amen. and this is where we'll close for today.